Let's go over the air requirements for my Rock of Fire show. Each Rock of Fire explosion character consumes about 5 cubic feet per minute of air at 90 psi. For the 7 full characters in the show, I would need about 35 CFM total. When I picked up my Rock of Fire show in 2019, the original Ingersoll Rand air compressor had been stored with them. Unfortunately, transporting it was not feasible, and it required 3 phase power, which we don't have. So, I started looking for air compressors in the 35 to 40 CFM range. However, I needed something quiet, as the compressors would be stored inside. I looked into storing them outside, but it would have been cost prohibitive to set up an outside shed for them, and knowing I would have to maintain them, I didn't want to have to constantly go outside to check on them. So, I found the Eastwood QST 30-60 air compressor. These compressors use scroll technology to quietly compress air. I saw that these compressors had good reviews and decided to experiment by buying one initially. I was super happy with it, so I bought two more. These compressors put out 12.7 CFM at 90 PSI, and this is 38.1 CFM in total for the three, which is just enough to run the full show. My uncle also loaned me a 240 gallon auxiliary tank, so I would have no problems with supplying air to the show. Since air usually contains moisture, water accumulates in the air compressor tanks. This has to be drained to prevent the steel tank from rusting out. In extreme cases where tanks have been left to accumulate water for years and years, they have ruptured or even exploded. So I equipped all air compressors with auto water drains so I don't have to do it manually. And it's not just an issue with the tank itself. Another issue can arise if water is not removed from the air before it reaches the characters. The moist air can destroy cylinders and cause the valves to stick. That means that the air has to be dry. For the drying system, I was actually able to use the original air dryer that came with my show. It had no issues and ran fine. I did have to replace the pre and after filters, but other than that, it works great. This is the way I have the three compressors set up. They connect together here, and then there's a filter right up here which filters out some of the water before it even reaches the dryer. This pipe runs to the 240 gallon tank which is outside. The pipe then comes back into the building and runs through the air dryer. This is the pre-filter, which filters out even more water, and then it runs through the dryer itself, which filters out most of the water, and then after that, there's another filter. After that, it runs up the wall 70 feet down to the other side of the building where the stage is. It then runs through one final filter, in case any water still remains in the air, and then this runs under the stage. The pressure coming into this regulator is 150 PSI. I want maximum pressure coming from the compressors so there's no restriction. The air runs to this device called the dual pressure regulator. This was a valve system created by Creative Engineering to switch the entire show from 80 PSI, which the characters normally operate at, to 40 PSI. This effect is used to slow the character movements for slower songs. I had a bunch of issues with this valve initially, which I will document in a later video. Once the air passes through this valve, it goes to a manifold which distributes the air to each individual character. I spent a few days under the stage running each of the air lines to the individual characters, and the main hose that runs to each of the character valve banks had to be replaced, which was documented in earlier parts of the restoration series. Overall, I'm really happy with how the air system turned out. The compressor still worked great, and the dryer had no issues despite being over 40 years old. You would be shocked at how much water is drained every day. The compressors accumulate a ton. I'm adding this short little segment. This is January 8th of 2024, and I actually have had a few issues with the Eastwood compressors. So the biggest issue I had was um, one of the compressors actually failed. This was the first compressor I got in 2022, and I had no idea what happened. In fact, I kind of figured that what had happened was the scrolls themselves seized. And if that happened, that would have been catastrophic. That probably would have meant I would have had to replace the entire compressor. But luckily, it doesn't appear that that's what happened. Um, I inspected it, and it looks like the starter capacitor failed pretty horribly, as you can see right here. And I'm not sure what caused this, but it's interesting, and it's something I'll keep an eye out for on the other compressors. But I'm going to get this replaced, and then hopefully the compressor will um, run normally again. And then one other compressor I had with one of the two compressors that I purchased this year was one of them at about 145 PSI will randomly start 
just relieving air. And I'm not sure why it's doing that. I'm not sure if the pressure switch is set wrong or s- some component has failed. I'm not entirely sure about that yet. But those are the two issues I've had. That issue with the pressure has kind of stopped, at least for now. But um, I will definitely let you guys know if that continues to be a problem because I really like these compressors. And um, they're super quiet. They produce a ton of air. But um, if I continue to have issues with these compressors, that would be unfortunate. But I, I, if I do continue to have issues, I wouldn't recommend them to you guys. But as of right now, I'm not sure. And we will see how these compressors fare in the next couple of months and years.